All right, so we have these new arrival Comanches on the Southern Plains, and as we mentioned last time, they're going to start making life difficult for other Indian groups, particularly the previously dominant Apaches. As we mentioned, the Comanches are nomadic, entirely nomadic. They never stop to plant crops. They get all their carbohydrates uh, from stealing from others. A little bit of hunting, or sorry, a little bit of gathering, but mostly by taking from the Spanish, the Apaches, and any Indian group that gets in their way. As we talked about, the Apaches, um, they're going to be pushed out of their uh, former territory by these Comanches. Comanches begin up here in New Mexico. Um, again, they weren't a distinct cultural group until probably late 1600s when the horse uh, arrives in this area. Then they're going to start expanding, and as they expand, the Apaches are going to be pushed away. Again, the Comanches more united than the Apaches. Uh, the Apaches can't join together, fight the Comanches, and so the Comanches are going to push them out. And as the Comanches begin to expand, they're going to either take over the Indian groups that uh, fall within this circle. A lot of people are going to call this the Comanche Empire, or you'll sometimes hear it called Comancheria. And the reason people call this the Comanche Empire is because if you're essentially within this circle, the Comanches are either taking from you, and that's going to be the case for the Spanish. As a matter of fact, the Spanish settlements east of the Rio Grande here in New Mexico, they're either going to be abandoned or they're going to have to be highly fortified. As a matter of fact, Santa Fe is really the only um, major Spanish settlement here in New Mexico that's going to remain after these Comanches start expanding. So you're either going to be... Um, subject to Comanche raids and the Comanche is going to be taking horses from you and a lot of people will say essentially the Spanish in certain areas almost become subjects of Comanches because the Comanches just take goods from them at will uh, and that would kind of be the case towards the edge down here um, right around San Antonio some people even say basically the people in San Antonio are unwilling members of this Comanche Empire because the Comanches are going to start stealing from them at will uh, and the Apaches are either going to uh, have to be pushed out or they're going to be constantly fighting these Comanches. Other groups like the Wichita's um, they're going to ally with the Comanches and as we're going to talk about this is going to benefit both groups because the Wichita's and in a little bit the Caddo's are going to provide uh, firearms and other goods from the French to these Comanches. So what will happen is the Comanches they take over this big area start raising horses. The French are going to need some of these horses. The Comanches will trade with them and the Comanches will also gather um, you know, livestock from the Spanish or sometimes they'll, they'll round up the livestock themselves and raid these Spanish settlements, bring them to the Wichita's. Wichita's will trade with the French over there. So what this entry of this Comanches and this Comanche expansion will lead to is essentially a full-on war between the Comanches, the Apaches, and the Spanish. So if you ever play StarCraft or any strategy game, you basically see that you have, you know, multiple combatants each have their own, you know, way of fighting, things like that, and then you have them face off each other. That's basically what you get here for the Southern Plains. You have these Apaches that are experienced horsemen, you know, they grow a little bit of food, but not, don't, you know, stay in one place for very long. But, you know, experienced horsemen, although not as experienced as these Comanches, the Comanches come in and again, um, you know, better horseback riders, can fire arrows under their horse, you know, just move faster than any of these other groups. And you have the Spanish who are, you know, um, less numerous in these two groups, especially when you consider Texas. And even Texas and New Mexico combined, probably in the, in the late 1700s, has less uh, people than either the Comanches or the Apaches. So the Spanish are less numerous, but again, they have technologies that these groups don't have as much as. Again, the, both these groups are going to start getting uh, more and more goods from the French uh, through the Wichita intermediaries. So the Spanish no, don't necessarily have that advantage um, uh, all the time either. So we're going to start seeing the Comanches raiding the Spanish and again the Comanches pushing the Apaches into the Spanish. So as the Comanches pressure the Apaches, Apaches need goods. One of the places they're going to get these goods is uh, through raiding the Spanish in northern Mexico and in Texas. So what are the Spanish supposed to do about this? How are they going to deal with not only uh, the Comanches but increased raids from the Apaches? The Apaches had always been a problem. Now they're more of a problem and you also have on top of them uh, these Comanches. 
Well, the uh, Spanish are initially going to take a wholly defensive approach to dealing with the Apache and Comanche raids. Basically what the Spanish will do is wait in their presidios. So you have presidios in a variety of locations. In uh, Spanish Texas we have um, uh, presidios at San Antonio, we have San Juan Batista, Los Ades, La Bahia. Um, Los Ades won't be raided because it's a lot of wooded area. The Comanches don't operate very well over the, in this wooded area. But, you know, San Antonio has its own Presidio. And what the Spanish will do is they'll basically wait until the Comanches, Apaches attack. Then they'll send their soldiers out to retaliate. Now, this isn't going to be very effective. And by the way, the Spanish in New Mexico would do this as well. Attack a settlement. The Presidio soldiers learn about a raid. Then they send out the Presidio soldiers to catch the Comanches or Apaches, whoever raided them. So this guy gets a lance, comes out. A perfect scenario, the Spanish soldiers would catch up to them, kill the Indians, and then um, recover the livestock or the horses and bring them back. Well, the problem is is that the Comanches and Apaches generally have better horses than the Spanish. You know, the Spanish have a difficult time catching them. They're not as uh, efficient horseback riders. And again, when they get onto the southern plains, the Comanches and Apaches know the land better than them. So in this, this defensive warfare is not going to be very efficient because um, the Comanches and Apaches are simply going to be able to run away before the Spanish can retaliate. Now, if Spain, the whole Spanish military, went up here to Texas and decided to retaliate against these groups, maybe they could launch an offensive campaign onto the Southern Plains. And as we're going to see later on, this is going to be one of the only effective ways in dealing with Apaches and Comanches. You send out you know, hundreds, maybe even thousands of soldiers. You surround the Comanches, Apaches, maybe attack and, and locate their rancherias, attack the teepee, something like that. Kill the family members. Then maybe you can force them uh, to settle for peace. But that's going to require a long-term monetary and uh, manpower investment. And Spain's got a lot of other problems in the middle of the 1700s. They're constantly at war with Britain and uh, the French. You know, you got, you got issues with them as well. So Spain isn't going to want to devote any additional resources to Texas. So these offensive campaigns, they're not going to be in the cards. And even if they were, the way that the Spanish government works is you have the viceroy. You know, he puts a governor in charge of Texas. Well, this governor is only in charge of a, a, the small resources of Texas. It's not going to be enough to launch a long-term campaign. And the viceroy, he's way down in Mexico City. If uh, he's first of all not going to devote a lot of resources to Texas, but even if there were a major Comanche or Apache attack, by the time he learns about it, if he did want to launch a counteroffensive, then um, by the time they get everything prepared, the Comanches, Apaches, their rancherias have moved far off. There's no way you're going to uh, to locate them. So simply coordinating a long-term offensive campaign is going to be almost impossible for the Spanish in Texas. Okay. Well, the Spanish are going to try other approaches in dealing with the Comanches and Apaches. Um, they'll try making peace treaties with these Apaches. As we've talked about before, the Apaches are multiple different bands, Mescaleros, Lipons, and even within those uh, groups, there's subgroups, sub-rancherias. Each of them have their own leaders. So if the, the Spanish make a treaty with the uh, one Apache group, it's not necessarily binding with the, uh, another Apache group. And a lot of times these Apache groups will simply turn their back on a uh, treaty whenever it's convenient to them. The Comanches, generally they operate together politically. but And so if you can get the Comanches as a collective to agree to a peace treaty, then they'd probably honor the peace, at least for the most part. But the problem is the Comanches aren't going to see any reason to uh, be at peace with the Spanish. The uh, Spanish aren't giving them goods they want. The French are. They can get those goods by raiding the Spanish, taking the goods, and then providing them uh, to French traders, or providing them to the Wichita's who then uh, bring them to the French traders. So the Comanches see no reason to uh, enter into a peace treaty. So how are we going to deal with things here then? Well, the Spanish will begin to think, what if we simply cut off trade with the French? So uh, there's going to be talk of going into East Texas and um, and putting out patrols, going to Los Ades, preventing Wichita's and Caddo's from you know crossing into French territory or cross, cr preventing French traders from crossing into 
um, Texas. Well, that's a lot easier said than done. The Spanish start patrolling outside of Los Adas looking for these various traders, but they're simply going to be ineffective at at cutting them off. Basically, French traders, just a handful of them with some goods, are going to be able to easily make it out into Texas and into Wichita villages, and the Spanish patrols aren't going to have a chance of catching them because, you know, how are you going to catch just a couple people uh, traveling in a, at a short period of time? You know, you need allies in the area, and a lot of the Indian groups don't want to, you know, cooperate with the Spanish to cut off the French traders because, again, they're dependent on the goods from the French traders. So, how can we deal with this? Well, some even uh, Spaniards consider abandoning Texas altogether. You know, we're not making any uh, money off this province. Uh, the missions, sure, the ones around San Antonio are, are successful. Los Adas isn't very successful. La Bahia isn't. But again, you know, if you abandon Texas, how long before the French move in there? And then they're right next door to your silver mines. Well, the Spanish are having all these problems in the mid-1700s when a different solution is going to uh, come up. And this is going to be in 1757 when a group of Lipans or Lipan Apaches will approach San Antonio and ask the Spanish to establish a mission among them. Okay, So the Apaches, the Spanish had considered missions among the Apaches before but again, the Apaches are primarily hunter-gatherers, again, occasionally planting corn. But, you know, the Spanish thought they're too different from us, or constantly attacking us. The idea of putting a mission among the Apaches is something that, you know, the Spanish had considered but quickly dismissed. It's not like the cold Tekans who, who had asked for missions previously. The Apaches are something else. They've always been hostile. But in 1757, they basically say, we want missions. We want missions among us. Well, the Spanish had been fooled by something similar before. We, we saw those Juntans and the Humanos basically request missions because they wanted protection from the Apaches, but then they later left the missions. Coaltecans, however, had asked for missions because they wanted protection from Apaches. Now, Apaches are getting attacked by Comanches. They're going to ask these uh, priests for, um, for missions, and the priests are basically going to look at the Apaches look at the success they've had with Coal Tekans in San Antonio and say maybe these Apaches have had a true change of heart and you're gonna see the uh, Spanish decide to fund a new mission among the Apaches now this is actually kind of interesting those San Xavier missions we talked about before they were among the Cocos with Urbago e Tehran involved they were failing. No um, Indians were staying in there. Most of the Indians that had come into those missions left. So basically they're going to take those missionaries that were in the San Xavier missions and they're going to redeploy them and the Presidio that you know previously been under Rabago y Tehran uh, by the missions. They're going to send uh, the missionaries to this one San Saba mission and these soldiers to reform a, a new Presidio just a couple miles away from the San Saba uh, mission uh, at the San Saba Presidio. And again, the idea is to get Apaches in with the whole purpose of hopefully getting them to adopt Christianity, hopefully getting them to become entirely sedentary, grow crops, and then maybe in a couple years' time, maybe in a generation or two, these hostile Apaches will become Spaniards. And again, that had worked in San Antonio among Coaltecans. Coaltecans, again, more, uh, much more poor than Apaches, didn't have the horse like the Apaches, but the Spanish are hoping these Apaches, um, you know, maybe the pressure from the Comanches is getting them to be willing to change their mindset. So the uh, Spanish established this mission, uh, again, right here in the, near the San Saba River, and they're going to build this Presidio, and the Presidio is a couple miles down from the mission. Again, there's some um, priests are a little worried that soldiers will have negative interactions with mission Indians, so they always make the, the Presidios uh, be built a little while away. Um, so, mission gets started up. Uh, the um, San Saba mission gets started up. A handful of priests are in the mission. They actually keep a handful of soldiers within the mission itself just to protect the priests. And the Apaches had pointed out, we want this mission in this area, uh, these Lipan Apaches, we want uh, the mission in this region. Once you build it, 
were going to show up. So, um, 1757, the mission's established on the river, and basically the priests, if they had watches, you can imagine them checking their watches, saying, all right, we got this thing built, where are the Lepons? Well, a couple months go by, still no Apaches. Hey, these guys said they wanted to be um, uh, in missions, you know, where are them? Where are they? Well, uh, pretty soon after a couple months, some Apaches are going to show up. A couple thousand Apaches, 3,000 Apaches will show up at the San Saba mission and they're going to say to the priests, all right, we're not yet ready to go on the mission. We want to go on this annual hunt, but do you guys have anything that you can maybe provide us? Do you have any like cool European goods, metal goods, um, stuff that you know might induce us to coming into this mission sooner? Well, the priests, you know, they're going to give them a, a couple goods. They're not fools. They they understand that, you know, the, the Lepons are buying some time, but they legitimately hope that the Lepons just want to make one last final splurge and go out, hunt buffalo, things like that, and then they're going to adopt this sedentary life. So the priests are uh, will supply the Lepons with these, these goods. So Lepons are going to go off with the Spanish goods, the goods provided by the, the priests, and the priests are going to be like, all right, where are these guys? They said they were going to come right back. Well, what I think a lot of people have figured out by now is the Lepons aren't really interested in changing their way of life. They want these uh, missionaries here in this Presidio because this is right in the area of the Comanche expansion. And what the Lepons are doing is they're basically trying to get the Spanish to escalate their war with the Comanches. They want their two main enemies, the Apaches, I'm sorry, the uh, Spanish and the Comanches, to fight one another, and they think by pushing the Spanish further into Comanche territory that this will induce war between the Comanches and the Spanish. They'd already been fighting before, but the Lepons are basically hoping that by uh, Spanish entering into the uh, deeper into Comanche territory, these two guys will fight each other. Maybe they'll kill each other off. Maybe the Spanish will push the Comanches back, and then the Apaches can regain their dominance of the southern plains. So to induce this fighting, the Apaches that got these goods from San Saba, they basically go out and attack a number of Comanche villages out here in the southern plains. And after they attack these villages, they're not going to leave survivors, but they'll just start scattering around Spanish goods. Um, hopefully getting the Comanches to think that it was the Spanish that attacked the villages and you know the Comanches come back and they see Spanish goods and they say it must be the Spaniards that recently built this mission and this presidio within our territory and they're trying to get again these guys to uh, fight one another. Well this is going to work because in March 1758 2,000 Indians, mostly Comanches, but also some of their Wichita allies. Uh, the Spanish would sometimes lump the Comanches and the Wichitas uh, together into a group they'd call Norteños or the Northerners. Well, these Comanches and Wichitas will con come to the San Saba mission. They're going to surround it. Again, 2,000 of them. And they're going to start whooping, making large, uh, loud noises, and trying to get the priest to come outside. It's kind of interesting, and it shows uh, how much contact the Comanches and Wichitas had with the French, because the Comanche leader of this group is actually wearing a full-on French uniform, uh, if that shows you how much the French are trading with the Comanches and the Wichitas. So uh, they're whooping. Uh, the priests are sort of crossing their fingers that the soldiers are going to hear about this downriver and they're going to come and rescue them. But word doesn't get to the soldiers. Again, the uh, uh, this, the priests and the handful of soldiers that are within the mission itself can't escape to get word downriver to the Presidio soldiers. So the priests are surrounded. They realize that just was it half a duff, dozen of us is not going to be able to withhold um, uh, keep away these uh, Indians so the priests are going to try to basically look to God uh, to help them solve their problems what they're going to do is uh, open the gate to the mission and they're going to uh, invite the Comanches inside and basically try to convert the Comanches in Wichita or you know get them to have peace with them well the Comanches and Wichita's are gonna have none, none of that 
they start ripping the mission in part once the uh, priests let them inside. They're going to uh, kill one of the priests. They uh, start gather, uh, grabbing the soldiers. They're going to rip out one of the soldiers' eyes. And they're going to kill all the animals inside and outside the mission. They're going to decapitate goats. They're going to kill chickens. Uh, they killed every animal they found, mules, horses, uh, sheep, uh, even some cats the Spanish kept around to uh, take care of rats. Now fortunately one of the priests and a handful of the soldiers are going to manage to escape the mission. I have no idea how they do this but they're going to manage to escape, uh, get on the river and make their way to the Presidio. I guess in this uh, depiction here this would be the Presidio. It's, it's down river here. Some of the people are going to manage to escape one priest and a couple soldiers and make it to the safety of the Presidio where there's um, you know, a couple dozen soldiers here, uh, and it, it's a, a defensive fortification. So this is going to offer them protection. Well, the uh, Comanches, Wichita's, after uh, you know, uh, destroying the mission, basically killing everything living in it, they will then march on the Presidio itself. Now the soldiers at this point have been warned that the uh, Indians are coming they've taken defensive positions and because these are well-armed men again they're far outnumbered by the Comanches and Wichita's but they are in defensive position they uh, there's a lot more people in the Presidio than there was in, in the San Saba mission so the Indians are not going to directly attack the San Saba Presidio what they do do however is they're going to start ripping up the crops outside of the Presidio um, and basically surround it and any time anybody inside the Presidio tries to leave the Presidio to go hunt anything like that the Comanches and Wichita's will try to attack them and kill them and for a very long time the soldiers can't get out, out of the Presidio it's basically going to take a daring raid or a daring ride um, from some uh, of the soldiers to escape make it to San Antonio and tell the Spanish about what has just happened to the San Saba mission and what has currently happened to this Presidio. It's at this point that uh, now the government of Texas learns about the death of these priests and the destruction of San Saba. They send word to the Viceroy of Mexico. We have the situation. Well, the death of priests and you know the, the horrors that the uh, people report about that happened in the missions uh, will actually get attention from the viceroy. The viceroy, you know, the death of priests will do that in the Spanish society. And so he's going to send a number of soldiers north to muster in San Antonio to bring war to the Comanches and Wichita's. The death of the uh, priests and the destruction of the San Saba mission finally gets the Spanish to pay attention to Texas up here. So a um, number of soldiers are going to be sent up. They're going to join a handful of Presidio soldiers from San Antonio and a couple um, militiamen, meaning you know locals here that volunteer, grab their guns and volunteer. And an army of some 442 Spanish soldiers will assemble in San Antonio in 1759, so uh, about a year after the destruction of the mission. And what they're going to do is uh, organize under a guy named uh, Colonel Diego Ortiz Paria. Uh, so 450, or sorry, 442 soldiers under uh, Paria. They're going to be joined by 170 Lipan Apaches. The Apaches are basically going to say, we'll help you out if you're going to go fight the Comanches. So we have this alliance, at least temporarily, between the Lipans and the Spanish. And what they're going to do is bring the war to the Comanches. Now that you have additional soldiers, you can launch this offensive campaign. And um, the Spanish are hoping will uh, you know, slow Spanish, uh, Comanche expansion. And what their plan is going to be is to find um, sort of the heart of Comanche territory, attack the Comanches uh, where they're at, and then maybe uh, go over here to East Texas and you know cut off the French trade uh, with the Wichita's and the Comanches. So find the, the Comanche homeland, find the Wichita homeland, bring the war to them, cut off the trade with the French. Well, Perea and his troops First, uh, they're going to, again, assemble in San Antonio, get their armies together, get all their horses, get supplies for a long campaign. Then they're going to set off in 1759. First, they go to the San Saba Presidio. Uh, they're going to provide relief for, for the Presidio. Um, and then they will start making their way up 
to what's today uh, the Red River. So, or I guess it was Red River then as well. But um, they make their way up, and they're going to start following where they believe the Comanches and the Wichitas have gone. They're going to take this path, and what they're expecting to find is maybe a Comanche rancheria with a bunch of um, teepees, maybe you know a couple hundred teepees, something like that. Maybe a small Wichita settlement. They don't know what to expect. Instead, what they're going to find around the site of what is today Spanish Fort, Texas, is a huge Wichita fort. And when I say fort, I mean this thing is going to be virtually a castle. It's something assembled out of wood and mud and adobe. Unfortunately, we don't have any depictions of it. No modern painters have painted it either. But this thing has um, uh, basically palisades, which huge uh, wood and uh, mud walls. It has uh, a moat surrounding it. So it's an Indian village with a moat surrounding it. The, under the main um, stockade or the main castle, there's actually going to be underground chambers. So there's a basement to this thing. And it's stocked with goods that the Wichitas and Comanches had procured in trade with the French. So this Wichita fort, the Wichitas, as we mentioned, are uh, semi-nomadic. You know, they'll, they'll go out for periods of time, semi-sedentary, I guess I should say, but they'll also stay in one location for a long period of time. Well, what the Wichitas had done, again, at this location of um, what's today uh, Spanish Fort, Texas, they had set up a trading post for where French traders could m come from Louisiana. Usually it's going to be right here along the Red River. The uh, French traders will come up the Red River. They'll trade with the Wichitas and Comanches here. And this trade had been going on for so long without the Spanish knowing about it that essentially the Wichita village became a permanent establishment. And the French, you know, and the Wichitas and Comanches, believing the Spanish would eventually come, fortified the, uh, uh, the fort to in case of a Spanish attack. And here it is in 1759, the Spanish are about to lead this attack. And by the way, um, this fort is going to be around for a long period of time. The reason that Spanish Fort Texas is called Spanish Fort is because the first American settlers get out here and they find this huge castle, this huge structure, and they're like, what the heck is this? And they think it was built by the Spanish. It was not built by the Spanish. It's this unique um, trading post that was built by the Wichita's, Comanches, and you know their trading partners, the French, uh, not the Spanish. But the first Americans out here didn't know that, so uh, uh, that's why Spanish Fort, Texas, is called Spanish Fort, making this uh, a village more unique. And again, it, you know, outside of the uh, main castle, there were normal Wichita houses, you know, uh, fields and fields of corn, bean, and squash. Um, but on top of the castle, there was actually a French flag flying. So the Spanish are going to assault this uh, huge Wichita fort on October 7th, 1759. And their goal is going to be to completely destroy the fort, sort of as retaliation for San Saba, uh, and also to disrupt the, the French trade with the Comanches and the Wichitas. Spanish, they're going to open fire on it. They brought some cannons with it. They're going to blow some holes in the main uh, castle of the fort. Uh, they're, but every time they try to rush through these holes, they're going to be held off by Comanches and Wichitas armed with French firearms. Um, again, the Spanish are going to um, uh, try to rush into the hole once again. They're going to be um, held off. The leap on Apaches that are with the Spanish soldiers they're going to start running away uh, when the Spanish ammunition start running out. And after four hours, Perea and the Spanish soldiers, they've already lost something like 50 men. 50 men have dead, uh, died in this battle. And so they're going to end up retreating um, back to San Antonio. So what do we do now? Now we have not only... Um, uh, you know, we've not only lost the San Saba mission, but we failed to win a siege against Plains Indians. I mean, that's something that's pretty unique here. You know, you think of, again, Plains Indians uh, in, in temporary villages, things like that. But no, this was actually a castle. Uh, by the way, archaeologists recently uh, did excavations uh, of this region. They, they found where the main location of the fort was, and they found, like, this basement area at where they've been digging um, and, and, you know, uh, finding French goods in the, these basements. All right, so what do we do now? Well, not only is this a problem, but 
the Spanish are, are facing problems in West Texas as well, so we're having problems over here, but th because the Comanches are pushing the Mescalero Apaches in uh, to the West, they're also facing problems in El Paso and La Junta, these places that aren't officially part of Texas yet, but, you know, La Junta by this time, Hispanicized, you know, a lot of Hispanicized Indians, El Paso again, a Spanish settlement, initially a mission, but, you know, a Spanish settlement over here. Uh, in what's today far west Texas. Mescalero Apaches are constantly attacking and the El Paso Presidio has a, a hard time holding off uh, on them and the Mescalero Apaches again pushed by the Comanches they'd actually started to pass through La Junta to get to these wealthier Spanish settlements in the interior so what the Spanish are going to try to do in 1760 and this is actually going to be the governor of this uh, state over here Nueva Vizcaya he's going to try to organize a presidio to be built in La Junta and so Spanish soldiers they think if we build it here in this settlement we have people around us that are essentially Hispanicized this will prevent the Apaches from raiding into the interior so we'll get the soldiers right here in this fertile area to protect uh, the people in the interior unfortunately for the Spanish they build this presidio in 1760 it's, it's completed on July 22nd uh, 1760 the day after it's completed, a group of Apaches surround the Presidio and basically they say, hey, um, we're not here to attack you. We're just here to um, celebrate. We want to be friendly with the Spanish. But unfortunately for um, the Spanish, they're not telling the truth. They begin attacking uh, the soldiers whenever they leave the Presidio. And very quickly, the uh, Presidio is going to be abandoned. So... But not only is it here in East Texas that we're seeing uh, difficulty, but also here in West Texas, uh, the Spanish are facing a lot of problems. So going into the 1760s, things are going extremely, extremely poorly for the Spanish, um, and they don't know what to do. They don't know how to retaliate, at least not with the um, manpower and the goods that the government is going to be able to give them. It looks like the idea of abandoning Texas, possibly abandoning New Mexico, and retreating the frontier uh, back uh, here, this might be a possibility. Fortunately for the Spanish, a war is about to break out in eastern North America between the British and the French. And that's going to lead to dramatic changes that will affect Texas.